everyone welcome to the matrix oracle my name is audrey i am your host for this astro forecast for june 21st 2022 <laughs> did i say that right 2023 that's a lot of twos <laughs> all right so we are entering cancer season summer or winter solstice according to where you are on the globe um so what i added as far as information because the week, this, this week is just a lot of very similar energies. Those quincunx energies are very much about trying for you to understand the power struggles, okay, and how to recalibrate, rebalance your energies, understand what's really stemming from you or what is stemming from your scars, your stars. Your trauma, <laughs> however you want to call it, <laughs> if you want to put a bow on it. Um, so what I decided to do is to add some of the asteroids to see where those asteroids were placed according to all the themes that we've been mentioning this week. So if you are not following the astro forecast, I strongly suggest you do in case you are struggling with those energies. It is cranked up. Okay, and what I mean by this is that there's a lot of, you can see those green dotted lines? This is quincunx, and quincunx feels like a punch in the face if you are holding anything that is in resistance with your highest truth and highest essence, okay? So a lot of us do. <laughs> so that means most of us, we're feeling kicked in the stomach, punched in the face, or thrown off on our butts on the floor. Okay, this is a lot of energy. We're like, what the heck is going on? This is to find emotional freedom. This is to find power, empowerment in yourself. Recover some energies that you've lost um, to past situations. Yes, some of you Stabbed in the heart, arrow to the heart. There's a lot that's going on energetically. This is why some of you, if you need extra support for healing, I've opened a circle. I do energy work every day for myself for hours. So I was guided to share some of my practices where even if you don't meditate, you can receive the energy that I'm channeling to help you. I've had some people that have major shifts just watching and those videos are short they're like 10 minutes 15 minutes max i try to just provide a lot of this energy that i channel every day because that's what i need to do to be able to handle this okay and talk about it because uh, like this morning i was like choked up okay um we're definitely going to be working uh you guys that are watching that i know you're part of the energy circle we're going to work on the resonance of the throat and the solar it was literally compressing my heart. And I was realizing to the extreme point that it did not matter who I was interacting with. You know, people that have nothing, well, nothing to do with my past or my trauma or my dynamic. And I was seeing that my struggle to maybe be sovereign in my authority, natural authority, uh, or just my ability to affirm what I wanted instead of just kind of always thinking to make it work for everyone else was literally the little girl that was faced with the same trauma as a child. I was like, I can't believe I'm facing my mother in every person. Sorry, mom. I love you. <laughs> so some of you will resonate with this and this is to bring some higher awareness. So this is kind of what I just related here. It's very much the asteroid palace. Palace is an asteroid that speaks of wisdom, divine wisdom, channeling, understanding the wisdom of what the frack is going on. Okay. And we have like this major cluster. It's like, can you get busy or what? And busy with some very strong players because we got Venus and we got Mars. So heart and mind being rational and irrational. No, intuitive. Okay, so all the people that have been telling others or feeling and being told that you're crazy, guess what? Payback is coming. What I mean is that a lot of people are going through spiritual awakening and they're going to feel crazy themselves. 
So what happens is that right now, yes, you're just being intuitive. You're just being in alignment with what your energy field is sending you. And the more you have your spiritual inner work and practice, the wider it expands. So watch for that power. <laughs> okay. So here we have a lot of energies that are tapping into the subconscious mind to help you regain access to your own counsel. You're your best guide. Okay. But some of you, you're just not hearing it, seeing it, feeling it, whatever senses, smelling it. Okay. Sense of smell. Some of you, you have that. You're like, it doesn't smell the situation. I don't like the smell of it, the sound of it, the feel of it, whatever senses are good or working most for you. And we have here this little asteroid that's going to help to support this process. And the placement here uh, in 2025 degrees of Leo is about freedom and how to get freedom by standing in your truth. Not as easy as it sounds, right? My empaths out there, right? Okay, because <laughs> we're so full of shit from past experiences that it's very hard to smell something else, okay? It's like when there's an overbearing, overbearing smell of, okay? It's very hard to smell anything else. Okay, so definitely not easy, definitely a process. And I'm hoping some of you, you go on my YouTube channel, the frequency music that I create is supercharged. Why? Because I use specific mantras, specific sound effects, specific music scales, okay, that when you mix it all together and you put it in your ears, it's like supercharged energy shift. So some of you, if you do use it, please make sure that you hydrate, okay? It moves a lot of energy and especially fluids because we're removing the matrix of especially the water, the cellular memory. So you have a lot of memories, your traumas, your emotion is water. So that means it is embedded with this type of information from the past. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm just glad for some of you that are just hopping on and just getting those messages. This is important for you to move all those energies out of all levels of body. Okay, and the first reaction usually to sound is water. And you can see it, there's many videos out there where you can see tests on water and how the sound ripples on it and how sacred geometry. You hold over 70% of water. What do you think is happening? Okay. My YouTube channel is called The Matrix Oracle, but you can just go on my bio link, you guys, and have access to my YouTube readings. And I think I put uh, the super empath. Right now, the super empath is especially removing jealousy, envy, and pride. Okay, because a lot of empaths have, literally that was like two weeks ago, I channeled a wave of energy to activate people for the new moon, for galactic activation. And some of you that I had to read for, I literally was acting like this. Like, what should I do? I can't remember. Oh, I have a client. Oh, no, it's not this time. Oh, uh, what? And I was like, whoa, tapping into their field. And I'm like, what the hell? How can you live like this? Thank you. So some of you realize that when you have absorbed so much energy that is not yours, that at some point, and you don't try to figure out. When people try, try to figure out your shit, it's more like try to understand that you're not supposed to do the laundry for everyone else's dirty clothes. You have your own set of clothes. You have your own laundry. So when people avoid journaling, meditating, or just sitting with themselves, realize that you're probably washing a lot of other people's houses, laundry, whatever, they just dump on you, okay? So that's kind of like something that you want to have is release the energy from others, but also realize that once you absorb other people's energy, 
there is some wisdom. There is some wisdom that has come from you holding that space. And that means that you can alchemize it and make it energy that is available for you because it gives you some power. Energy doesn't die. Okay, so everything is going to be like transferred naturally, but you need to know that every time you've absorbed, dealt with other people's sh okay, that is not just like, oh, take it back. The fact that you did hold on to things that were not yours, you learned. And how I can illustrate that is like, for example, when you work in a company, and you started working at the company at the bottom, okay? And you had to hold on some of the basic needs for the company to grow. You have a potential to understand how to manage from the, top, from the bottom to the top. And guess what? How does this machine work? In working from being led by the top, it is led bottom up. That means you need to know the structure for you to hold anything. Your ground, stand in your ground. So a lot of people, if you're struggling with this type of energy wave, remember doing any type of chakra healing, listen to sound, very simple, okay? I'm going to be creating more and more um, sound healing frequencies, especially in perfect harmony with the perfect fifth. What is the perfect fifth? It is twinkle, twinkle, little star. <laughs> twinkle, twinkle, little star. Da, 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 da. Okay, this lights up. You can hear it. Na, na. It opens up. And it's a perfect way to make sure that you don't have blockages. Root to throat, sacral to third eye, um, solar to your crown. And then here you have your heart and it connects to your soul and it connects to the earth, okay? So what we have here also is that we have Juno, the asteroid of marriage that is linked to the sun. And the sun right now and Juno are talking about you remembering certain things that occurred in the past so you can see the scales of what's yours and what's not and what you decide to marry to. Like, what are you deciding to still hold on to? And how is this going to affect you? Because look at this. We have here Juno and the sun, and you see this blue line? Goes to Saturn. Okay, Saturn is talking about healing. So it's saying, okay, watch what you allow in your life and what you marry into, okay? Because that creates a trine, and that means that everything that flows from it, good or bad, is just going to flow. Okay, and especially people, if you have any type of placement in this um, Scorpio, yellow, okay, that means you're going to be super, super duper triggered. And not just your son, any placement in Scorpio. I'm pretty sure a lot of you out there have some placement, okay, because we are literally triggering this grand shrine. So more of the beginning. So some of you also, the end of Libra could be like me a little bit. Okay, but that's kind of what is going on uh, as far as the energy. Now we have here Vesta, the asteroid that is more talking about your soul commitment. And Vesta uh, were high priestesses in the Roman times where literally Romans, before they went to war, they were relying on the prayers of the high priestess, which they were virgins, okay? Um, and they had to pray to this flame and maintain a flame forever on, okay? Through their prayers, and that's what was protecting everyone. So that's kind of like a representation of the fire of your flame, what lights you up, what keeps you, you know, inspired, and... Uranus here is in a placement that speaks of joy. So what's interesting is here, Vesta is asking you, contemplate on what brings you joy and do more of that. And if it doesn't, then you have to, you see how this is triggered? You have to kind of look, Uranus is saying, okay, well, if it's 
If it doesn't feel right, it's probably because here you're not connecting to your intuition. Your intuition will tell you what feels right that doesn't feel right. This is a square energy. But here we have Uranus that is like in trine with Pluto. And Pluto is about helping you to rebalance all of those things, especially one-on-one -on -one with people. It's saying if the people don't bring you joy, if they're not supportive of your growth, then let them go. Okay? And I know some, sometimes it's very hard because there's attachments. There's attachments to the version of yourself that you used to be. So don't get upset if people... <laughs> are still attached to the version of you that was less empowered, less aware. It is a task for you to be more empowered and kind of show your growth and your autonomy. Okay, so that's a lot, okay? I agree. Like every morning, like this week, I've been like, oh my God, I gotta talk about this. I'm like, I can barely like deal with all this shit myself, okay? Um, but what saves me is the energy work. What saves me is creating the music. I am so sensitive to sound. Sound allows me to activate all my players. I'm like super empathetic in this type of field. So if some of you need support, this is why I have this circle that is open. You can go on my bio link. You can join us. This whole week you have access to a bunch of meditation, a bunch of like healing activation, and you can watch it whenever you have the time. Okay, so this is why I created this way, access to Monday to Sunday, Sunday included. You can watch and have access to everything that is needed for this week. So if you're not seeing clearly, hearing clearly, because some of you even getting readings when energies are overwhelming, it's almost like I could be like trying to explain to you something and you're like, because you're like, I'm like, it's like, what is she saying? <laughs> Because some of you, you can relate to this. When you're in, like so much in your emotions, it's like you become deaf. You become blind. You become like you're not even grounded. And realize that sometimes for me, people are like, oh, well, how do I get grounded? Nature didn't really ground me. Sound does. Sound puts me back in my body. Okay, so some of you, that could be something you can do for yourself. And what type of energy works I do is um, I use mantra, I use mudra, I use breath work, I use sound, scales. Some of you get ready because I'm like starting to create in such a very fast pace. There's going to be a lot of stuff that I'm going to be sharing for free on YouTube. But again, if you want to start putting it further in your practice, yes, I love those Sanskrit mantra, by the way, you guys. Like, I love it. And... Some of you have to realize that Sanskrit is one of the oldest language. So this is why when you uh, pronounce those, those sounds, they're just very, very powerful because they're so ancient. They carry a lot of wisdom from all the people that have chanted them. This is how powerful chanting some of those mantras are because you have generations and generations and generations and generations of people reciting those words that are trying to attune from a place where they don't feel comfortable to another place. And their wisdom in that journey from one position to the other is what you are gaining every time you do it. At least this is what I feel when I do it. And I'm like, how though? this is working so obviously we have to remove a lot of things yes definitely sanskrit love it love it all right you guys that's all i have for today which <laughs> felt like a lot <laughs> not like you um but i'll see you tomorrow namaste